What's up, guys? J.R. Raymond back again, coming to you from MRB Classic Pro Shop. There's a little controversy in the air spinning around on Flow Bowling and some of the other uh, places where Sean Rash made a comment about urethane. It says it should be banned from the PBA. Do you agree with this or do you not? Uh, that's a pretty controversial subject because everybody has their own beliefs. Uh, but I'm going to kind of try to explain a little bit as to why Sean thinks the way he does. And, and I could be wrong, but uh, I've talked to him a few times, talked to him a little bit. Uh, and I think I understand where he's coming from. Uh, and we'll dive into the controversy here in a minute. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, welcome back, guys. So the big controversy surrounding the Internet over the last couple of days now, I guess day and a half, uh, Sean Rash got onto uh, the PBA show at the end of it, was interviewed, and said he thought that the urethane bowling ball should be banned. Um, and he didn't come out and specifically say which bowling balls that caused the stir-up or caused the issue, um, but in the flow bowling interview, uh, he was kind of hinting towards a single bowling ball that kind of changed the urethane industry, that changed uh, a lot of things. And uh, I, I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain this is the one he's talking about. This is the one that came out just a few years ago. And this is the one that you see the, the staffers that can use this and the people that can use this, this is their first choice. Uh, just because it's it's a completely different shape, it's, it's creating some things that are a little bit different than what most urethane balls create. Um, so... Is it an advantage? It's only an advantage, like Sean said, it's only an advantage if uh, you're not able to use that ball and somebody else is. That's the only time. Um, but for the most part, no. I mean, anybody could really go and get themselves a urethane ball and use it. But so here's where the controversy comes up. So he says that it should be banned from the PBA. Do you agree with it? Well, I'm not going to say whether I agree with it or don't agree with it, but I will let you know that I understand why he's saying that. I understand what he's trying to say. Um, and basically what he's trying to say is that urethane balls are almost used like a crutch. You know, some of the guys who, uh, and gals maybe even, who uh, they start seeing a little bit of flatter pattern, the easiest way to control your ball reaction uh, and to be able to just hit up on the ball as much as you want and continue to use a strong ball, uh, a strong hand release, uh, is just to grab urethane and keep your angles open. A lot of guys don't like shutting their angles down because they know later in the block they're going to have to keep them open. So what they do is they just try to grab a ball that can let them create those same angles and then just ball up and go to resin as they go left and get away from where they were. Well, So um, I guess the belief is that you should be able to change and manipulate your hand or even, now here's a crazy thing, there's ways to make reactive resin create the same shapes as what urethane does. Now, the problem with urethane is that actually it, it carries oil. It, this doesn't absorb oil like any other bowling ball does. Any other resin balls are very porous and they absorb the oil. So they don't move it down the lane nearly as fast as what something like this does. So when this ball hits the lane, it picks up that oil, puts it on the cover stock, and just moves it down lane. Now, it doesn't absorb it. It doesn't stay on there. So unless you're wiping the ball off, that oil keeps building up on the ball and it continues to go down lane. So it continues to change the lane. It's taking the oil from the front at a faster rate because these get beat up at a very high surface or a very low number surface. Uh, and they want to get them started and they want to get them to hook the entire, not the entire lane, but they want to get them to hook front to back as much as possible. So they beat them up. They take them to 500 or even 360 at times to get them to start up in the front and really shape around, around the back part of the lane. And that takes the oil from the front and moves it down lane because they don't absorb the oil. So now people who are using resin in those same areas, eventually their ball just starts to basically go straight because it's using up energy in the front where these took the oil out, and then it's never got a chance to hook down lane because now there's even added oil at the back part of the lane. So the problem comes into, you know, they change the lane a lot, and then the second problem comes in, guys aren't using it because it's the greatest option. They're using it to stay out of trouble. They're using it, and it ends up basically... I guess you'd say destroying the pattern or changing the pattern too fast. So uh, is it a crutch? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I can see what he means by people using it when when they really don't need to because Mo came out and even showed in video that you can just take a, a resin bowling ball or mostly even an asymmetrical or a symmetrical bowling ball, put a, a one inch or even a short pin layout on it and you can get it to start right away 
and just really roll off the rest of the pattern, which gives you the same type of shape that urethane does. And I think, in my opinion, I think the reason why some people don't like that is they're just doing it on the wrong bowling balls. They're trying to do it on bowling balls that have big swirls, you know, something like this. The Zing here, it's got black and blue swirls and stuff. And so they're seeing it go down the lane and tumble and they're seeing these swirls and it just makes the ball look like it's just bleh, really bad. Now, if you were to do a two inch or a one inch layout on something solid, you know, like, a, uh, like I have for me, I use an Eruption Pro Blue. When I need something like that, this is my two inch Eruption Pro Blue, solid bowling ball. So it just literally looks like a urethane ball going down the lane. It doesn't look like, you know, a different bowling ball that's going clean and then hooking down lane. This ball hooks immediately in the front, maybe not immediately, but it hooks in the front 15 feet of the lane. And then it kind of just slows down and blends the rest of the pattern out. So when I see the lanes being super tough, I go to something like this. Um, the only time I'll really ever go to urethane is when I see everybody else using urethane because then it makes this ball not hook down lane because now the cover stock and everything is just going to scoop. So it, because this won't hook quite as early as this and it won't create the shape exactly like this, it'll be similar, but it's not gonna be the exact same thing. But if everybody was using this, you wouldn't see the change in the lanes. You'd see people staying right further, longer, uh, and then you wouldn't see all the distraction, the, the garbage down lane on the lane from the oil being moved down. Uh, so I'll use urethane only if um, even this isn't getting the job done, if it's hooking too much, and even on short patterns. On the short patterns, I don't think anybody has a problem with people using urethane on short patterns. It's when you get on those longer, flatter patterns, the 40, 41, 42-foot patterns that are flat uh, and they give you no miss room, that, that people kind of, they, they start to say, eh, I don't know that you need to use urethane. Uh, I understand you're using it to try to control the lane, keep everything in front of you really you could be doing that with other bowling balls. So I guess I understand what Sean's saying. Um, I don't, I, you know, I'm not going to say I agree or disagree either way. Um, I can see both sides of it. Um, I don't know that banning urethane is necessarily the right thing to do, you know, but um, I, I guess maybe people just need to, and I'm, I'm not saying anybody in specific, and I'm not definitely not going to say any of the tour guys need to learn how to do it. I don't, I don't think, um, but it would be cool uh, to start seeing um, league bowlers or, you know, some of the, the amateur bowlers kind of get away from using so much urethane and going to stuff like this when they see their ball hook too much. Because the, the, the common misconception about urethane is that they don't hook as much as a resin. And that's not true. It actually, the urethane balls hook more when you're talking overall hook uh, because they hook earlier, you know. So they may not hook down lane like other bowling balls do, but they hook more in the front and middle part of the lane. So um, when you see more hook, why not go to a weaker ball, weaker symmetrical ball with a short pin layout that'll allow you to stay straighter and do what you want to do with it there. So I don't know, that's just my two cents on it. Um, not a whole lot of controversy here, but I just thought I'd, you know, kind of explain some of his thoughts out a little bit. I did talk to him a little bit about it. Um, and I do believe that, you know, this is the ball he's talking about that he doesn't like being out there. Because I, I don't even know. I don't know how it's made. I don't know what it is. Supposedly it's supposed to be like a pearl urethane. Um, but something they did with these balls um, are just different. They create a different shape than any other urethane ball does. So I don't know, uh, just a little put things into a little bit of perspective there. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think urethane should be banned? Or uh, do you think urethane is just a crutch? Or do you think urethane is a good tool? Now, I'll say my opinion. I think it's a good tool if you use it in the right times. Um, I do get a little irritated when I see a longer pattern and the first ball out of somebody's bag is a urethane ball just because they want to see if it works. I mean, because then you're kind of stuck, you know. So I'm not a fan of getting trapped into throwing urethane because everybody else is throwing urethane. But um, there's always adjustments you can make. There's always times where you can move, you can do different hand positions, you can do different things. Um, so I guess it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's still about making the right shot, making the right ball choice, and doing the right thing. So anyway, that's all I got. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for something that could happen or, but if you're going to comment below there and start calling people crybaby or whatever else, like, don't do that. He's not crying about anything. He's just big, simply expressing, you know, the way he feels about it. So there's no crying. The guy just won the tournament against people using your thing. Why would he be crying about it? He's not crying about it. Uh, but like he said, he, he's just not very good at it. And when you're not very good at something, you know, I'm the same way. I'm not very good at it, you know, so I'm not a huge fan of it. But I'm not against it at the same time. So I don't know when you're not a, 
It's just like a lot of people that fight against the two-handers. Well, they can't, they don't do it and they don't have the ability to do it. So they're against it a little bit. You know, that's a whole different discussion. Uh, or I did a video not too long ago about it. And that's actually two-handed bowling is tougher to do than one-handed bowling. The only thing that's harder in one-handed bowling is clearing the thumb. But anyway, we're not going to get into that right now. Um, but let me know in the comments below. Subscribe, like, share, do all that good stuff. Uh, and let's get a little conversation going. But until next time, guys, I'm out of here. We'll see you later. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.